It is what it is. I ran to the store this morning, got a couple goodies. So my JKS body lift came in. Shout out Offroad Elements. They had this here came in like super, super, super quick. So uh, I have that because I just jacked the uh, grill support grommet off the other Jeep. And then on this side, I just have that little spacer. So it'd be really nice to have uh, at least the grill supports in there. So I know where my radiator is going to fall because the radiator is attached to the grill support. So there's that. That's cool. It's good stuff. Um, at Home Depot this morning, I wanted to get a little laser level so I could uh, center my axle underneath the Jeep. However, they only had one in stock and it was like $100. It's a little bit overkill for what I need to do. So I just didn't get anything. We're going to do it the old school way with uh, some string and a plumb bob. Uh, while I was there, I got a new angle finder. I had an old one that was in the shop when I got it, but I figured I would get a new one so I know it's accurate. Um, and then I got a big square. This is gonna come in handy just for some fabrication in the future. I don't necessarily think I'm gonna need it right away. And then I just got a little uh, quick connect socket thing for my little impact because I think the one that I have is a little different or something, but uh, so. Oh, and the other thing I got, go over here. I got some uh, EMT conduit. This is the plastic stuff from Home Depot. Uh, I kind of forgot to bring my uh, forgot to bring my uh, Johnny joints with me to figure out what size uh, links I'm going to need. We're going to jump right back into this project, and uh, I'm actually working on using my Sony here. Uh, I changed a bunch of settings. We're filming in 60 frames per second. Let me know what you think of that. Um, sometimes it gets a little weird, but. Uh, Last things left, I need to cut off the Jeep, at least on the front end, uh, are the controller and brackets. What I'm going to do is actually, uh, I think I'm actually going to leave this upper one on there for now. And I'm going to run my upper link on the driver's side. So I got to cut off that bracket. It actually doesn't seem too hard to get to. It's going to be a little dark under there. It doesn't seem too hard to get to without the axle under there. So I'm just going to zip that off real quick and then, uh, I'm going to put the axle back in the lower position. I'm going to mark where it lands in the stock position. And then we can start making some links and we can push the axle to where I want it. Yeah. Okay, she's off. I am uh, not going to completely clean it clean from all these little pieces here. I ground them down the best I could. See if it wants to. Yeah, I ground them down the best I could. It's gonna work for me. It's absolutely miserable to get under there. Uh, without being on a lift, all this metal just flies in your face and burns, and it's just not fun. It makes me. Really wonder how I did that, the whole track bar bracket thing, but uh, glad that that's done. So I'm ready to put the axle back under here now. So that's cool. I could do this every day. It don't matter what they say. I've been on the wave. It's a party, make a toast. It's a party every day. So anywhere you go, all across the coast, we do it every time. Like So what you just saw me doing was measuring for the center point of the axle forward and backward. Um, I'm just going to use my truss as a as a just a measuring point. Um, it was 24 tenths wide, so I put a line at 12 tenths right in the center. Hung my plumb bob. Um, and not only does this give me a location of where my stock wheelbase was, because I have my short arms in right now, um, this will give me a reference point for how much I'm going to push the axle forward. Uh, now, I did measure my caster angle right now. 
Got an old school angle finder this morning, right on top of the knuckle, or right on top of the C actually. And I got eight degrees right there, which is, which is great, because I would prefer a little extra caster. Um, I'd like to see if I can get 10 degrees out of it. That's what most aftermarket axles are set to. Um, that'll give me a little bit of play. Looking at my pinion angle now, it looks like it'll be decent. Um, it's, the axle is really not going to drop too much lower than this. Um, and then if I push the axle forward, it's going to help that angle as well. So I'm going to try and hold this exactly how I have it right now. And I'm going to just push the axle forward and see where she's happy. This is where I want to stay. Nah, nah, nah. I could do this every day. Nah, nah, nah. Well, there we have it. That is the last bracket on the whole front end cut off. Obviously, I need to get these uh, little pieces off, but that is the last whole bracket right there. And uh, can we just take a second to admire how clean the paint is right here in this section? I actually wiped a bunch of this stuff down. You can see like all these lines. It just looks so much better. I am like blown away at how clean this Jeep really is. Okay, well now that most of, well actually all the cutting is done. Literally every bracket on the front end of this thing minus the passenger side upper control arm bracket which is not coming off anyway. Everything is cut off, it's cleaned up. We're ready to start building for real this time. And uh, it feels really good, so. Figured now is a good time to fill you guys in on the build plan. So obviously I'm going to a three link. I'm using all TMR brackets. And uh, so I did a lot of calculations this, uh, well, yeah, this morning. Um, the three link calculator by Dan Barcroft is just an absolutely incredible tool. Um, so I crawled under here and I have a good idea of what I want to do. I think my lower lengths are going to be around 33 to 35 inches. Um, but those are not going to be adjustable. I'm using the brackets that are already on the axle. Um, these were from the old uh, swap. These are actually aftermarket Clayton brackets. And uh, so those are just gonna go to a, a standard, uh, actually from Barnes, just a standard lower control arm bracket. So those pretty much are not adjustable other than raising the frame up and down. But the upper control arms, I got all adjustable brackets. So pretty sure, I think I filmed uh, assembling. This is a TMR universal three link bracket. And this thing is going to be a lot of work, but it's going to be really nice to be able to fine tune exactly where I want uh, the upper link to be. They give you all this extra material so you can cut it to whatever angle and up and down and left and right. So that's pretty much going to be today's agenda is to get that thing up there. Um, and then up in here is the upper control arm bracket. Again, it's an adjustable one. Um, I do have about nine to 10 inches of separation. I think this lower bolt gives me nine inches of separation at the axle, which is pretty freaking good. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I do think I might end up trimming that because the issue that I'm running into is that this is the AC compressor right here. And the axle right now is about at ride height. So let's see if I can get in there. If the axle comes up, it's gonna, well, I can't really show you, but the bat bracket is super close to the AC compressor. It only has about an inch or so, but I am gonna do a body lift and a motor mount lift. So I actually forgot to order my motor mount lift, so I just did that this morning. But uh, I do, I still can get a good idea of where the bracket's gonna go left and right so I can get the most up travel that I can. Um, I think, the only other way you could get more up travel out of a setup like this is, well, there's two things. You could delete the air conditioning 
or you could lower your lower brackets and lower your upper bracket so you lower your whole separation but uh, I'm just working with what I got and uh, I think by doing a motor mount lift and if I have to I will raise my frame height which right now is at 20 inches um, which is actually really low because then my belly is only going to be probably 18 inches if this is my skid right here so I do have plenty plenty of adjustability I do think I might lean towards just going up with my frame height um, it would be easier in the future to lower the frame height with other mods or do a flat belly uh, so that's where I'm at I'm going to pretty much just tack that bracket up there I do need to do a little bit of work to get it to sit right on the truss because this truss has these lips so I want to grind out a hole for that so that bracket sits down in there nicely I can get a nice weld all, all along that and then uh, Basically from there, I can uh, get a piece of my conduit ready and run it down somewhere over in there. And I can get this guy fitted up where I want it. I also just want to take a second to appreciate how clean this frame is. It's actually incredible. Everything's a little dirty, but while there's nothing under here, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to clean it up real nice. So. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to film on this as far as B-roll stuff, so um, I'll see you guys when I make some progress. So I was having trouble mocking up my links the other day and I've come up with a different and better way. So my bungs don't necessarily fit tightly in the tubing. So we're going to go through, through the tubing and then through the joint. Yep, that'll work. And the ground. I just realized this won't work because the uh, bolts have to go through the joint. So those will have to go. But this way will work and I can put one around here to pull it tight. Yeah, I like that. Okay guys, so I haven't really been filming too much because honestly it's kind of boring. Um, again, there's not a lot of B-roll stuff that I can film. so. Um, now this clip it's actually Sunday uh, my girlfriend got a new puppy yesterday so of course we got to go play with that um, if that stuff like going to see the puppy or something is uh, maybe some stuff I should include in these videos or something and make more more consistent uploads um, let me know I'm interested but uh yeah so I got a lot done yesterday and um, you guys saw the last clip I filmed was um, how I was attaching my Johnny joints to some uh, PVC conduit to mock up my links. Um, I did manage to get some of the links on there. I'll show you that now. So the axle right now is at full bump. Um, you can see I got my three inch measurement up there from stock and my plumb bob right on the line. Um, my caster is at 10 degrees. I'm checking it right behind the ball joint here since I'm not taking the, uh, if I was taking the whole axle apart, you take the shaft out, you can measure your caster just by putting an angle finder on the bottom, uh, the bottom like flat face here. But I'm just doing it on the top side on this flat ridge here. So I got 10 degrees there. I'm three inches forward. This link length is 30, uh, 33 inches, which is perfectly good. I did mock up my skid plate a while ago, and I put a mark on the frame there. I know my skid plate is going to be on this side of that mark, 
So any length the control arm I did, as long as I'm on this side, I'm good. So that bracket is actually tacked up there. It's hanging all by itself. And that's how she looks at full bump, which is really cool. And I do think that this side of the axle will have a little bit more room to articulate up on its own. So perfect that there's a little bit of room there from the frame. And that's looking good to me. Um, here's what we're working with for steering. Again, my frame height right now, frame height right now as mocked up is 20 inches. I'd like to keep it as close to that as possible. Um, I did mention that my belly height is going to be really low then, so I'm not opposed to lifting it up. And I do have the adjustability in my upper arm to make sure that all my numbers are good. So this is the bracket. I trimmed it up a little bit. She's uh, just kind of sitting there on the frame rails. So there's the upper arm, the upper control arm bracket, kind of just chilling in there. So this is my upper link. It's actually angled up right now pretty good inside the frame rail. That bracket is tacked on there. I filmed a clip getting that to fit nice in there. It's pretty good. A um, Couple things I ran into is that my drive shaft, I can't get it. It's like actually the perfect length to not work. Um, so this length drive shaft at full extension is actually the minimum length drive shaft I need to get to make all this work. And so that's really kind of something I need to work on today is I need to figure out a way to mock up the drive shaft so that it is straight so that I can uh, finagle my upper bracket because the drive shaft in here, when it gets up, up in there, it's super tight. So I need to uh, keep messing with that and I need to keep moving this bracket um, towards the outside of the frame as much as possible. However, I need to also make sure that I can get in there to get to the uh, you know, the other side of the bolt. So I don't really think I can go too much further than it is now. So that's gonna be interesting. I might actually, I mean, if I do have to go any further, I'm gonna have to do something like the factory style where they drill a hole straight through the frame so you can uh, get to the nut through the frame. Um, I really don't wanna do that but it's gonna be an option. And again, I'm at full bump. The drive shaft does clear right now, but it, I think the drive shaft clears right now, but I really would prefer to have a little bit of extra room just to account for deflection and some changes in angles and the joints and stuff like that. Uh, all right guys, so that's gonna do it for this video. I have a lot in store, a lot to catch up on as far as editing and stuff. Um, we got some DOM on the ground. That's exciting. I got some other stuff I need to do to finish up this steering project. So uh, stay tuned for the next one. Peace.